Hello and welcome to this overview of using Bitwarden Directory Connector for the Bitwarden Password Manager. My name is Adam and I'm an Integration Engineer at Bitwarden, responsible for pre and post sales technical questions and support. Today I'll be giving a brief demonstration of some of the considerations you may wish to make when deploying a Bitwarden Directory Connector. To quickly introduce Bitwarden as a company, we were founded in 2016 and we have always been based on open source principles. The full Bitwarden source code for both the server and all clients and additional utilities, including Bitwarden Directory Connector, is available on GitHub. And alongside this public exposure, Bitwarden also pays for regular code and infrastructure testing by external auditors. A full breakdown of the Bitwarden security model is available in our white paper. There are plenty of other reasons to use Bitwarden, some of which are given in this slide. One particular aspect and advantage of Bitwarden that I'd like to highlight is that we're the world's only enterprise-grade enterprise self-hostable password manager. Today, I'll be using a cloud-hosted vault on bitwarden.com using infrastructure based in the USA, alongside some demonstration self-hosted infrastructure. Bitwarden also has a distinct EU-located service at vault.bitwarden.eu, which is completely independent from the US-based one. Finally, many Bitwarden customers choose to self-host their own vaults on premise Bitwarden offers full feature parity across all of these different environments. One of the other products that Bitwarden offers is Bitwarden Secrets Manager, and it's a great addition to the password manager solution, especially when automating complementary infrastructure, as we're going to be demonstrating today. Bitwarden Secrets Manager allows for the use of machine-to-machine -machine secret access, and in the demo repo alongside this presentation, you'll find three different examples of this, where we configure the BWDC host to pull secrets via Python scripting, Ansible, and also via the BWDC CLI tool using Bash. Another resource that we're going to be using today is the Bitwarden Labs GitHub repo. This is a separate repo to the core Bitwarden repos and contains demonstrations, examples, and starting points for introducing Bitwarden tools and workflows into your own environment. While it's important to remember that the examples provided here are not part of the core Bitwarden product and therefore not subject to the same security vetting procedures, we think it's a great resource for those of you looking at getting up and running with Bitwarden. In particular, we recommend the admin scripts repo, which has some great automation examples for the password manager product. By the time this video goes live, we'll have made the example code and scripts used in today's demonstration public for you to clone and fork. And it's also worth noting that we accept PRs if there's something you're doing in your own organization that you'd like to share. Before diving into Bitwarden Directory Connector, I'd actually like to talk about the way that the majority of users configure provisioning and deprovisioning today, which is via Skim. Bitwarden supports Skim v2 using standard and configurable attribute matchings and is available for the following IDPs. Azure Active Directory, or Enter ID, Okta, OneLogin, JumpCloud, and Ping Identity. Connection to Skim is via a Skim API key, available from the admin console under Settings and Skim Provisioning. Once configured, Skim can be used in the same way as BWDC to provision and deprovision users and groups, and additionally to control organization members' group access. This can be mapped against collections inside of Bitwarden, allowing you to effectively control and automate access to your organization's secrets via your IDP. For situations where Skim is not appropriate, Bitwarden offers an alternative application, the Bitwarden Directory Connector, or BWDC. This is available for Windows and Linux, as well as macOS in both GUI and CLI versions. The recommended deployment is documented in our help docs at the link above. But to summarize it, we recommend using the GUI application to generate a data.json file, which can then be copied over to a machine running the CLI version. This allows for lightweight, simple automation. The way that secrets are managed on the CLI machine can be handled in several different ways, and I'm gonna give a demonstration of some of the various ways to do that in the next few minutes, starting with Linux and moving on to Windows. Let's dive right in. Our first step will be to generate and obtain a data.json file using a machine with a GUI, in this case, Ubuntu Desktop. We've already installed BWDC GUI app um, via an app image, which we can get from the documentation and the download links here. And we can see that that is running here. I've already logged in. We are in the settings panel and we need to input a few pieces of data. We've got the directory type and in particular, the sync filters for the users that we want synced over. Uh, in, this in this configuration, we are running a configuration with an active directory, which is located at windows.lan. We can come back to the dashboard and we can test our sync 
and we can see that this brings us over the information that we are wanting. So that means that the data.json has been prepared and is ready for use. If we inspect this data.json, we can see that we have the configurations that we just set in the GUI, but we have some of the, um, the data is marked as stored securely. That means that it's been stored in the machine's local keyring, which is unlocked via user login. This secret storage is scoped to this particular machine, and it will not be available on the CLI machine that we eventually want to run BWDC, BWDC on. This is something that we're going to offer a couple of solutions for in a minute. In the meantime, we need to move this data.json over to our BWDC CLI machine, and you can use any method that you like um, to do so. One thing that I'm going to do, just to demonstrate a little bit the Bitwarden ecosystem, is actually upload um, the file as an attachment to a Bitwarden Vault item. Um, and it will be the role of a Python script that we're going to deploy to our CLI machine later to download this via the Bitwarden CLI tool. One important part of managing a Bitwarden organization in general is implementing the principle of least privilege. So we can see here that the access to this collection here is reasonably broad. We have three different groups have access. Whereas um, the item um, for this particular containing this particular data.json is scoped um, to only the administrators and this particular individual user. For large deployments, we generally recommend using groups in order to provide manageability at scale. However, this particular use case is a good demonstration of the flexibility of the collection management model. Uh, I've got a deeply nested collection, so this collection is a couple of levels deep in my collection structure with permissions scoped to just admins and that particular service user. So anybody who's normally in the systems team who could normally use any of the parent collections will not actually be able to stumble across this item and its attachment. Let's move across to our freshly provisioned VM, this time running Ubuntu server with no GUI available. We've included a sample Ansible ROM that will deploy bit one uh, directory connector to the Linux VM alongside bit one secrets manager and the bit one CLI tool and a small Python project allowing for the download of the data.json from the organizational vault where we just placed it. As you can see, this is just finished running. So now we are logged in as our BWDC user and we're going to attempt to perform a sync. Bearing in mind that the LDAP password is still stored in the keyring scoped to the GUI machine, that's to say it's not currently available on this machine. Um, we've run BWDC test there and we can see the error that occurs. We've got two options to fix this. We can either set the password in plain text or we can install and configure a keyring compatible with BWDC on this machine. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate the plain text option first. Firstly, we're going to export. this environmental variable here and set that as true. We're then going to demonstrate that the data.json is already available, that's been, been brought over. Um, so we're not actually going to do any editing or overwriting of that. We're going to edit that now with the BWDC commands. We're going to perform a BWDC logout. And we'll log back in using our organizational API key. Bear in mind that this is not the user API key, this is the organizational API key. Because we've set um, plain text secrets, we can now insert a plain text secret. So we can do that with the config keyword. In this case, I've set the LDAP password, but if you're using Google Workspace or a different directory, you would set a slightly different uh, variable there. What we can see now is if I have a look inside that um, file, we have indeed set uh, inside the data.json the password in plain text. And now that that is available and BWDC is using plain text, we can see that that should work just fine. Performing the sync as it did on the GUI um, with the secret secured by the fact that the access to this machine itself is restricted. 
If plain text secrets secured behind a VM are not acceptable to your organization, then we'll need to provide a headless keyring tool. In this case, I've opted for GNOME keyring, and you can see example deployment steps for that in the example GitHub repo. You'll note that we set the keyring credential via the Bitwarden Secrets Manager plugin in Ansible, and we obtain the secret and deploy it at runtime. Once the keyring is installed, we've got another play here that just copies a simple shell script over to the um, BWDC user directory and um, runs the shell script as the BWDC user. The shell script um, firstly unlocks the uh, BWDC, the GNOME keyring, allowing for encrypted secret storage, and then it uses these secrets to interact with the BWDC binary. Once again, rather than provide the shell script itself with plain text secrets, um, we are obtaining um, these secrets via the organizational vault via Secrets Manager, and this time we're using the BWS CLI tool via Bash. If we watch the if we watch the script running, we can see that it first unlocks the GNOME keyring, and then it sets the LDAP password, and then it runs successfully. Um, this time, it logs to the logs directory. The BWDC script is now a suitable target for what automation solution you prefer, which will probably be on Linux, either a cron job or a system D timer. Before heading over to Windows, let's just take a quick moment to look at how this project moves the data.json from the, C the GUI to the CLI machine and obtains the secrets to log in to the Active Directory server, which up until now has been explained away with a little bit of hand waving and magic. As said before, you can do this however you want, but this is a nice example of using the whole Bitwarden ecosystem. We'll just take a couple of minutes to look behind the curtain at some of the flows involved and at one of the key advantages that results from doing things in this way. To start with, we've got an empty Ubuntu server ready to have its configuration deployed by Ansible via my Ansible server in the bottom right. The Ansible Secrets Manager plugin calls to the appropriate project and grabs the machine access token for the target machine, deploying it as an environmental variable as part of the infrastructure as code configuration. It then goes ahead and deploys the other configuration necessary for this machine, including BWDC, GNOME Keyring, the Python script, and VNV, as well as the BWS and BWCLI binaries. We've already uploaded the data.json to a Bitwarden Vault item using the GUI and scoped the access to this Bitwarden Directory Connector service user. The Password Manager Vault can be accessed via the BWCLI tool, and to authenticate here, we just need the API key of the BWDC service user, as well as that user's decryption key, in this case, a master password. Using the Python Secrets Manager integration, a small collection of scripts obtains the service user's master password from the appropriate BWDC project using the access token previously deployed to the Ubuntu server. With the MP now available, the BWCLI binary can now log into the password manager vault as that service user and download the data.json, deploying it to a location available to the Bitwarden directory connector. The next step is a little bash script that will again use the machine access token stored in the environmental variable to obtain further secrets from the secrets manager project. This time, the Active Directory user key password and the GNOME keyring password. It then encrypts the Active Directory password inside the GNOME keyring installation, ready for use by Directory Connector. The final step is to use the Bitwarden Directory Connector binary to connect to the Active Directory server using the encrypted credentials from the GNOME keyring installation. Taking a very quick look at the code, this is all available as sample code in the Bitwarden Labs repo associated with this session, which will be in the links below. Looking at the fetching of the master password, we can see that we use the Secrets Manager Python integration to build a client, which is then used to obtain a specific secret from a project where the access token set on the Ubuntu VM is valid. If you'd like to investigate the full Secrets Manager data model, you can do so by uncommenting these lines here. We then use that master password to generate the session key. 
and then use that to use the BW get attachment um, CLI commands to grab the data.json file, ensuring that it's output where the uh, BWDC binary expects it to be. When using the CLI, it's important to always log out at the end to revoke the session key. Finally, we can have a look at the shell script, which again grabs the GNOME queuing password and the LDAP password from Secrets Manager and sets these appropriately on the target VM. One of the, uh, the primary benefits to this method is the full event logging, which takes place as a result. Coming into the org admin panel, we can see the event log for each access, along with data on the type of access that took place, including client details and IP addresses. This information can be viewed in the panel here, or more usefully exported via the Vault Management API for ingestion into your organization's logging solution. Moving over to Windows, things are a lot simpler. On this Windows Server machine running the Active Directory server itself, I've installed both the CLI and the GUI versions of Directory Connector, grabbing them both from the download section at the bitwarden.com website. After installing these, following the same pattern as Linux, you can then simply configure the BWDC app and therefore the underlying shared data.json file by the GUI and use the test sync feature until you've got the result that you're looking for. One thing to note here is that as I am running against localhost and the full directory displays a lot more available objects, I've had to use a group filter that is a little bit more strict than was required on Linux. Once I'm happy with the sync, I can simply switch over to the CLI version. And here I am running that in the command prompt. And as you can see, without doing anything else, a BW test sync pretty just works. We'll do it in a second. And just to wrap everything up, viewing the data file um, .json does indeed prove that the secrets are stored, encrypted in the Windows queuing, and therefore I'm now ready to write a simple PowerShell script that can be automated via whatever method you prefer. Thank you for your attention during this overview of deploying the Bitwarden Directory Connector app on both Windows and Linux. For any further questions on BWDC or any other subjects, please do get in touch via any of the usual methods. Happy Secrets Management!